Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Welcome back to the strategy of voting. Today's topic is the non-randomness axiom. So remember that in this unit, we are attempting to create societal preferences from individual preferences. And the way we do that is by using a social preference function. But we want to make sure that our social preference functions fulfill particular rules, or what we call axioms. And this is the first axiom that we're introducing, the non-randomness axiom. And what that tells us is that a social preference function must create social preference through a deterministic process. And to see what that means, it's best to look at what it means can't be the case. And the clearest counterexample I can give is the random dictator. So imagine that we had four individuals who I'm giving random names and associating random colors to. And those individuals all have well-ordered preferences among four alternatives. So these preferences of each individual are going to be complete and transitive. And the way that we're going to determine society's preferences based off of these individuals' preferences is by randomly drawing who's going to be the dictator. So on day one, imagine that our roll of the die determined that Toph was going to be the dictator for today. That means Toph's preferences, her individual preferences, are the societal preferences. She's the dictator, so she gets to do whatever she wants to do. And so we are just following her preferences. So you can see the map on the right is matching what we see on the left, where B is preferred to everything. And then D is preferred to A and C, but not B. A is preferred to C and nothing else. And C is the worst possible outcome for her. So societal preferences are simply matching Toph's preferences because she is the dictator in this day or on this day because of the way the random dictatorship picked her out. But on the next day, you can imagine that we're going to run into problems here where we have a new roll of the die, and the roll of the die determines that Aang is the dictator for today. And so now the societal preferences are Aang's preferences. So D is the best, then A, then C, then B. And of course, you move on to day three, and you have a new roll of the die, and now Katara is being selected as the dictator for the day. And so C is the best choice, then A, then D, then B. Now, this should strike you as being really weird and really counterintuitive because on one day, on day one, B was the best outcome for the society. And then on the next day, D was the best outcome for society. And now today, C is the best outcome for society. So this is very strange where the determination or what's determining who or what is the best preference or best outcome or best alternative is a simple random draw. That is weird, that is odd, and that is silly, because nothing underlying the system is changing here other than some random move. And that's why we don't want to allow randomness. Randomness is bad. It seems strange to think that society's preferences should depend on that roll of the die that's determining who's the random dictator. And so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, that's not to say that societal preferences shouldn't be able to change from day to day. It's just that it shouldn't change from day to day based off of a random element. It should be a deterministic process that's selecting societal preferences. So societal preferences should change if individual preferences change. If, say, Katara were to switch her choice from C being the best to D being the best, then that makes sense for the societal preference to perhaps change based off of that. What doesn't make sense is for societal preferences to change purely because the way that the coin or the die flipped or rolled today was different than the day before. That's strange, and that's something that we're not, allow, not going to allow. So for the rest of these social preference functions, we're going to assume or we're going to make sure that those social preference functions choose the societal preferences in a deterministic process rather than with any sort of randomness. So that's the non-randomness axiom. Hope you enjoyed this. And in the next video, we will be looking at another axiom which requires some sort of responsiveness out of our social preference functions. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.